Hello everybody! In today's video lecture, you are going to learn about vectors, vector components, and addition. There are two general types of physical quantities. A quantity that does not involve a direction is a scalar, such as mass and temperature. A vector is a quantity that involves both magnitude and direction, such as force and velocity. A vector quantity is represented by symbols with an arrow on top of them, or sometimes with boldface letters. You can represent vectors by drawing them. In fact, this is very useful conceptually. When a vector is represented graphically, its magnitude is represented by the length of an arrow and its direction is represented by the direction of the arrow. Can you tell which drawing represents the vector A? I'll go with the black one because it seemed to have four units to it to show the magnitude and it is pointing in the northern direction as given. How about vector B? I thought so. The component of a vector is the influence of that vector in a given direction. Take a look at this blue ball. Say you kick it in the direction shown. What do you expect it to do? move in the positive y direction. Why? Because the force only acts in the positive y direction, so it has some influence in the y direction and no influence in the x direction. Let's measure the force vector using our Newton scale. Its magnitude is 4 Newton. We can represent our vector by its coordinates like this. And notice that we also have its x and y components. How about now? Our vector has a magnitude of 3 newtons and only has influence in the positive x direction. Vector components allow us to break a single vector quantity into two scalar quantities with which we have more mathematical experience. So its x component is 3 and y component is 0. Please note that these components are scalars and can have positive or negative values based on your coordinate axis. Now this time our force has influence on both axes. Checking against our Newton scale, we can see that x component of vector C or Cx is 3 newtons and y component Cy is 4 newtons. But how about the magnitude of the vector C? Is it 3 plus 4, 7? Doesn't look like this. Here is a right triangle. So we can calculate the magnitude of vector C using the Pythagorean equation. So the magnitude is 5 newtons. And finally, we can calculate its direction using the inverse tangent function, as you can see. At the end, we can represent vector C as 5 newton at an angle of 53 degrees. Let's resolve vector A into components. 5 meter at 53 degrees. I remember this vector from somewhere. Earlier, we had vector components and found the vector's magnitude and direction. Now it is the reverse. OK, first thing to do is place your vector onto a coordinate axis so that its tail rests on the origin. Then draw two parallel lines to the x and y axis to form a rectangle in such a way that your vector forms a diagonal. Now mark the vector components. We have two identical pairs here, but the components are the ones that start from the origin. Please make sure components are not drawn too short or too long, but just right. Drawing the vector components like this is okay for your math class, but it is not acceptable for physics for reasons we'll discuss later. Please mark the vector components correctly. Finally, calculate the scalar components using the right triangles and trig. I see a right triangle here. So using the cosine function, cosine of 53 is ax over a, Therefore, AX is 
a cosine 53. It gives me 3 meters. Now I need to find a y, but I know that these two sides of the rectangle are identical. Therefore, I'm going to use this side here, and I can use the sine function. Sine 53 is a y over a. Therefore, a y is a times sine 53, and it gives me 4 meters as expected. And here are my scalar components. There are several methods for adding vectors. The first one is called the tip to tail method. Simply place the tail of one vector at the tip of the other, then connect the exposed tail to the exposed tip, as such. The vector formed is the sum of the first two, or resultant. As you can see, adding A to B or B to A makes no difference. A vector can be multiplied by a scalar, that's a number, and the result is a vector. Let's view this example. Let A be 2 meters to the north, and let's multiply A with 2. 2 times A is 2 meters to the north times 2 makes 4 meters to the north. What if I multiply A with a negative number like negative 2? Negative 2a, however, is 4 meters to the south instead of north. This means if we multiply a vector with a negative number, then the direction will reverse. To subtract a vector b from vector a, simply form the vector negative b, then add it to a. Here is an example. First, we are going to keep the vector a as is, then form the vector negative b, like so, the same magnitude, opposite direction. Then put them tip to tail, and voila, here is your a minus b vector. Let's add these vectors together, a, b, and c. First, Bring the vector A, place the vector B at the tip of it, and finally put the vector C to the tip of vector B. Connect the exposed tail to the exposed tip to get the resultant or the sum. But what are the chances that we can draw this accurately and then measure the resultant correctly? Not very good. Therefore, there must be a better way of adding these vectors together, which is using scalar components. Let's find the scalar components of all vectors. We already did this for vector A. Now, vector B has only a vertical direction. This means its horizontal component would be zero as you can see here. The vector C is pointing along the west and south directions, which is along the negative side of the coordinate axis. So the scalar components must be negative. Now we are going to add all the horizontal components together and we will call it the horizontal component of the resultant. We can show the same thing as a vector addition. So here's a vector for ax. bx is 0 and here is cx added to it. And here is the sum of all horizontal components. We can call this r of x, which is the horizontal component of the resultant. Similarly, we need to add all the vertical components together, like so. And we can show the same thing as a vector addition as well. Here is ay plus by. 
and CY added to it, the resultant Y is as shown. We can use this as RY, the Y component of the resultant. Now, since we know the components of the resultant, we can easily draw the resultant itself. As you see, this is the reverse process of drawing the components of a vector. Now, we need to find the magnitude and the direction of the resultant vector r. So, let's mark the direction with an angle. Using the inverse tangent function, we can calculate the angle. And using the Pythagorean theorem, we can calculate the magnitude. And we can represent the final resultant vector as 5.5 meter at 85.73 degrees north of east. Here is a step-by-step -step guide to adding vectors using scalar components. Thank you for listening.